In 2015, 3.2 billion people globally were at risk of contracting malaria, a potentially life-threatening disease. Malaria is carried by some species of Anopheles, carrying the plasmodium parasite pathogen. These Anopheles are prevalent in many countries, including Sub-Saharan Africa, Asia, Latin America and to a lesser extent the Middle East. We have developed a depot injection for doxycycline in malaria prophylaxis. The current malaria prophylaxis regime is doxycycline 100 mg tablets. That's taken once daily, starting two days before exposure, taken daily whilst in the area, and for four weeks after exposure as well. There's a few problems with this. Number one, reduce patient convenience, reduce patient compliance, and therefore higher risk of prophylactic failure with the doxycycline IV-1 soft depot injection. Um, this will be made available in six week, eight week and 12 week doses. And that will cover them also for the four weeks post exposure as well. So who are we targeting with this IV depot? Uh, first of all, um, it's travelers who will be in the Milleris area for more than two weeks. Um, in an area where there's high prevalence of resistance to other drug therapies, um, currently used for malaria prophylaxis, and also where we suspect the patient will have compliance issues. So with the depot, we're going to have a couple of benefits with this. So number one, we've improved patient convenience, improved patient compliance, and a lower risk of prophylactic failure. In addition, we've also got um, reduced GIT side effects. So doxycycline came into use in 1967. Shortly after that, the physiochemical properties were discovered. Let me walk you through some of them. So firstly, Doxycycline has bioavailability of over 90%. In fact, this molecule satisfies 4 out of 5 Lipinski rule as shown in this table here. This rule are used to predict the likelihood of absorption by passive diffusion through the cell membrane. Hence, the potential of drug to be orally bioavailable. Next, we would like to examine the PK of this molecule. Doxycycline is an amphoteric compound with three pK values as shown in this figure here. This is a weak base with an overall pKa of 3.9. As pK determines the overall proportion of ionization, it is very important to know the pK of doxycycline to predict its lipophilicity, solubility, and permeability. For example, at a low pH, doxycycline has a greater proportion of ionized molecule than the unionized, Therefore, it should have a high solubility in this environment. However, the ionic proportion is less likely to cross the biological membrane, hence its permeability will be compromised. The chemist will need to consider these factors to decide what ideal pH of the solvent for our formulation later on. Study on doxycycline solubility also help chemists to design a suitable solvent for our product. Our aim is to formulate a water in oil in oil double emulsion to prolong the release of doxycycline from the depot site into the systemic circulation. Here is an illustration of doxycycline solubility in different solvent. Have you enjoyed it? Doxycycline Depot is a unique formulation that uses advanced microsphere technology. It is engineered to provide sustained release for three months in a ready to use pre filled syringe. This distinctive formulation involves encapsulating doxycycline in polylactic co-glycolic acid using a water in oil in oil double emulsion solvent removal technique. What makes it so unique and how exactly is it formulated? The first phase involves fabricating spheres. It is achieved by first dispersing an aqueous solution of doxycycline in PLGA dissolved in dichloromethane. Here, a water in oil emulsion is created using probe sonification, which simply means applying sound energy to agitate the molecules. Next, this primary water in oil emulsion is added to a secondary oil phase, which consists of silicon oil and DCM. It is further sonicated to form a stable secondary emulsion. DCM in the silicon oil phase during the secondary emulsification reduces the rate of diffusion of the solvent from the polymer phase. This produces a stable emulsion 
which has aqueous droplets of doxycycline distributed within the polymer-rich organic phase in a continuous phase of oil. Lastly, the secondary emulsion is added into petroleum ether, which is a non-solvent for the polymer. This results in the diffusion of silicon oil and DCM into the non-solvent bath, causing rapid controlled precipitation of the polymer droplets into small discrete spheres. The result is very small aqueous droplets of the doxycycline, which is thoroughly dispersed within the PLGA matrix. This provides the slower continuous release of doxycycline, which is predominantly dependent on the degradation of the polymer. Doxycycline depot can therefore be delivered in a ready-to-use pre-filled syringe containing a small volume for sustained therapeutic response. The doxycycline depot formulation will require a number of excipients to ensure a consistent and controlled amount of drug is delivered to the patient for the period where they are susceptible to infection by the malarial parasite. The depot will be formulated as a water in oil in oil emulsion. A double emulsion is used to encapsulate the hydrophilic drug doxycycline, improving the overall stability of the formulation. Using the double emulsion technique has been shown to minimise the loss of doxycycline during the encapsulation process. To form the initial water in oil emulsion, doxycycline is first dissolved in water and then conjugated with polylactic chloglycolic acid, PLGA, that has been dissolved in the water immiscible solvent, SPAN80. This is then tonicated with silicon oil in an organic solvent called dichloromethane to form the secondary oil phase. Compared to using a single water in oil emulsion, the resulting water in oil in oil system provides more protection to the doxycycline and a slower release from the microspheres into the systemic the circulation. The section of the doxycycline depot injection must adhere to the PICS guide to good manufacturing practice instated by the Therapeutic Goods Administration as required by the Australian Government's Department of Health. This ensures the maintenance of high standards of quality assurance in the development, manufacturing and control of medicinal the products. To be formed through matrix polymerization, the manufacturer must have the suitable equipment in order to fulfil the specific processes that this method undergoes. The main equipment involved in this process is an ultrasonic homogenizer to form an emulsion of the drug and polymer solution, a positive pressure filtration column with an appropriate filter to separate the unwanted products, and a lyophilizer to dehydrate the product. The equipment must adhere to the standards of the GMP, ensuring that the technology and systems are current and reliable as the use of outdated equipment may lead to error. It should be prepared aseptically through sterile manufacturing, which needs to abide by various regulations. The air must be filtered with a HEPA filter in accordance with the grade of the room. Appropriate gowning and personal hygiene is required to ensure the sterility of the product along with fully trained and qualified personnel handling the equipment and the products. Hazard management must also be exercised to ensure constant and safe environmental working conditions. The product must undergo a multitude of sterility quality control tests, ensuring that the product will not be released for sale or supply until all the relevant and necessary tests are performed and the product is deemed satisfactory. So the most important way in which we can reduce the doxycycline dose, yet still keep it within therapeutic plasma levels, is by controlling the rate of absorption. How we're going to do this is we're going to increase the thickness and play around with the porosity of the polymer matrix coating around the drug, and this will uh, modify the rate of the drug release and hence absorption. So this affects the rate at which the dissolution fluid can penetrate the polymer coating, the rate of drug dissolution, and the rate at which the drug escapes through the polymer coating. So doxycycline penetrates well into all tissues and fluids. This is not a concern, especially since doxycycline targets and kills the piece false parum in the schizont phase of its life cycle. So this is where the parasite has invaded the red blood cells, um, and this is where they mature. Doxycycline is about 50% metabolized by the liver and the rest is excreted by the kidneys. By reducing the metabolism as well as the excretion, we can prolong doxycycline's half-life, duration of action, and hence reduce the dose of drug required. How can we do this? We can pegylate the surface of the microcapsule and shield it from macrophages and the reticuloendothelial system.